Sarah, if you want to start sharing your presentation a while. Yeah, I've just, um, I had to do some quick, I, uh, changing between my work laptop and my home laptop. So I'm just yep. making sure everything's okay. downloaded and I'm closing out a bunch of other stuff. And so should I just click the share screen? Yep, you can just click that. And I've and already set it up that you should be able to share. It says that host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, one second. Okay. Okay, try it now. I made you a host. Okay. Desktop share. Oh, God. <laughs> to open my system preferences. <sighs> And everyone in attendance, just so you are aware, we are recording this session. So if you don't want yourself recorded, then leave yourself on mute or connect from Facebook where it's simply streaming out to you. Shane, I have to, I had to, I have to quit and reopen it because I had to allow security. Okay. So. Hey Shane, this is David. Yeah, do you want to start with your introductory remarks, David? Well, I don't know why I'm not appearing. Isn't there something I do down in the lower left-hand corner to make myself appear? Yes, yeah, so you have to click the start video button in the lower left-hand corner. Your video is now streaming, but it's black, so I think you have something covering the camera. Oh. I don't know what makes you cover it. Well, I I don't need to be seen, but uh, I'll just start. This is David Morrison, and I'm uh, the executive director of Historic Harrisburg Association. And want to thank everybody who is tuning in uh, for our annual presentation of our preservation priorities. We've been uh, updating this process every year since the 1990s. Uh, this is our 2021 draft version, which our Preservation Committee Chair, uh, Sarah Sweeney, uh, will be presenting in just a few minutes. So this audience tonight is the first group that will be seeing and hearing this presentation. It's in uh, Zoom format, so that at the end of the presentation, Anybody that has any comments or questions will be able to uh, uh, raise them. And um, we will then be, uh, Sarah will be presenting this to the Board of Directors of Historic Harrisburg, having aired it publicly tonight, next week at the board meeting at which it will be uh, officially adopted as our preservation priorities. And we will begin to announce them publicly uh, as we've done in past years. You may recall that a year ago, right after we made this announcement, uh, it garnered a full page uh, story in the Patriot News and as well as coverage in other news media. So we're finding that the preservation priorities and the fact that many people participate in shaping our preservation priorities each year, uh, that this is an important uh, exercise uh, in terms of uh, uh, the built environment in Harrisburg, uh, preserving buildings that need to be preserved, buildings and sites, landmarks, and so forth. And as a result of this uh, exercise each year, I can say that quite a few properties that were listed as priorities in the past uh, have become quote unquote alumni of the list. In other words, they've been restored. In some cases, they've, they've uh, earned preservation awards uh, for the work that's been done. So you'll see that towards the end of Sarah's presentation, the, uh, the, the properties that have graduated from the list uh, and are no longer priorities because they've been restored. So 
this means that this process is really having uh, an impact and influence on uh, uh, decision making as far as, as building and renovating and uh, uh, rehabbing uh, older properties in the Harrisburg region, not just the city of Harrisburg, but Harrisburg and the surrounding area. Uh, and uh, uh, this is also an exercise in, in green technology. They say that the, the greenest building is a building that's already been built. So that's why restoring and rehabbing buildings as opposed to building new ones wherever possible uh, has benefits beyond just the aspect of preserving the historic architecture. So we're really very proud of, of the impact that this has. The developers who are getting more and more active in restoring and preserving old properties in and around Harrisburg. It's really uh, great to see how, how this has grown in the last several years. Um, Sarah is the chair of our preservation committee, which is a very large committee, and uh, they work uh, jointly in developing the priorities that you're going to see and hear in just a moment. Uh, and um, we thank the committee for all of their hard work as, as volunteers. Uh, that's, that's really a, a big, big part of the historic Harrisburg mission, and we, we thank you for that. Um, I'm going to uh, introduce Sarah. Uh, Sarah not only is the chair of our preservation committee, but she's director of operations for Chris Dawson Architect here in Harrisburg. Uh, their office is at uh, Second and Pine Street downtown. And uh, the Dawson firm and Sarah in particular have been involved in a number of historic preservation projects in and around Harrisburg in recent years, some of which have appeared on this list and become graduates uh, in, in the manner that I described a moment ago. Sarah, if you're ready, I can uh, turn it over to you now. If you need a little more time, we can, uh, um, I can go on and on, but if you're ready, I'll turn it over to you. Well, I wanna um, ask first, can you see the screen, the presentation up? We see a white screen at the moment. Does your present is your presentation just a white page at the moment? No, it's not. Okay, then no, we are not. We're definitely seeing something on your desktop, but it just looks like a white screen. Okay, bear with me here. Yeah, if you have multiple monitors, my guess is we might be seeing a different one. No, I or only have you one. selected the wrong application. Okay. Um, yeah. Hi, David. Are you there? I'm here. Yeah, this is Dorothy. I'm on and I can't see anything. I didn't even see you. I heard you, David, but I didn't see you. I just saw a white screen. Yeah, no, David's not visible, Dorothy. He's not sure how to work the camera. Okay. Okay. I'm glad it's you not me. Yeah, you didn't miss anything there. Okay. Now we can see your screen, Sarah. It's not okay. the presentation. It's just the Zoom. Can you see the presentation now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, I apologize. Um, First off, I, I don't know how to, I had it in full screen and it's not in full screen anymore and I'm not sure how to do it and I don't want to change anything. So if everyone's okay <laughs> uh, viewing it this way, yep. then I will continue. All right. So David, thank you very much. And thanks to all of you who've joined uh, the meeting and the Preservation Committee is really excited to present uh, this year's 2021 Preservation Priorities. Um, we've been hard at work and I, I missed most of David's comments and I'm going to assume he's sort of discussed a little bit about what we've been, you know, the hard work we put in this year. Um, and we've implemented some changes which uh, we agree will provide us with a greater focus both as a committee um, and assisting in our committee's mission uh, for the organization for HHA. Um, this is also my first time as the Preservation Committee Chair presenting the priorities, and I want to give a shout out to Jeb Stewart, which I know and imagine many of you know him or of him, and he's really been the force behind this preservation uh, committee and the presentation for many years, and so I am stepping into some big shoes here. So I wanted to start with this first slide. Uh, which is the HHA Preservation Committee Charter. Um, I won't read it out 
loud to you, uh, you can all read it. But one of the things that I think the committee, we either discussed or we really sort of took away um, from revisiting this charter was that uh, the word advocacy is a key word in it. And this really helped guide the development of the new format we developed um, depicted on this slide. So the key change that we made here was narrowing down the priorities to what we're calling the HHA top five. And by doing this, it's allowing the committee to focus on key properties <clears throat> uh, we determined needed the most attention to raise awareness through research, education, and communication. And the model for this new approach came from the National Trust for Historic Preservation, which every year publishes the 11 most endangered historic places. And we figured if the National Trust could narrow down the entire United States to 11, we could probably do five. So other priorities will remain on the watch list with new ones added each year as needed. And the watch list items may cycle into the HH top five from year to year, or hopefully um, to the change in status or to the wins category. And um, it is important to state also that a priority is a priority until it's preserved or gone. So our top five priorities for this year are the Bosley House, William Penn High School, former William Penn High School, Camp Curtin Memorial Mitchell United Methodist Church, the Harrisburg State Hospital, and the Prospect Hill Cemetery Gatehouse. And the Prospect Hill Cemetery is just off the map I'm showing here. So the five is roughly pointing to where it is, but it's at the end of Market Street. So the Bosley House, which is at 220 North 2nd Street has actually been a priority since 2019. Um, it is adjacent to the entrance to the River Street Garage and between Tom Sawyer Diner and Zembe's Restaurant. It's one of the earliest structures still standing in Harrisburg and it dates from the late federal period and rumored to be a hewn log structure, um, ironically protected under a skin of aluminum siding. So it's uh, deteriorating, um, it's in very bad shape, uh, especially if you go around to the back, uh, you know, when I used to pull out of that parking garage, it's, it's just not in good condition in the back either, uh, lots of damage. Um, so we're hoping to really, you know, raise awareness of this property um, over the next year. And with the revitalization that, you know, Harrisburg is, you know, really primed for, um, hopefully we can maybe make some strides towards bringing this building back to life before we lose it. Um, and I wanted to say too, that's one I forgot to mention in the introduction, one uh, thing that the um, committee, you know, we kind of did talked about through the years, the pandemic has, you know, really changed things. And I think how we view where we live and, and work. And there's a lot of migration, not a lot, but some migration out of the cities into other areas, because I think we're moving into this new remote um, on-site work uh, life balance. Um, and, you know, Harrisburg has already seen some of the influx from other cities. So, you know, the pandemic might uh, really help with the revitalization effort of Harrisburg. And it'll be interesting to see where the city goes over the next five to 10 years. Um, the next, let's see. hold on here. I don't know why this isn't advancing. Here we go. All right. Former William Penn High School is our next priority for 2021. Um, located at Third and Division Streets, it was designed by Charles Howard Lloyd in 1926, and it is currently being eyed by several developers, um, some more likely than others, to demolish most or all of the structure. Uh, so we are really keen to keep an eye on, um, you know, what is happening. Uh, with this structure. Um, we really think that sensitive reuse of the open space around it as well is just as important as the future of the building. The next priority for this year is Camp Curtin Church located at 2221 North 6th Street. 
Um, it was closed and it's currently for sale. And it's a century old landmark church with uh, important ties to Harrisburg's Civil War heritage and an anchor in that uptown neighborhood. It's listed on the National Register of Historic Places and there are several buyers interested, some of whose plans could compromise the architectural integrity. And the firm that I'm with, we are actually working with one of the potential um, interested people. And um, I can tell you that that person is very keen to, you know, try to be as very, you know, as sensitive as possible to the nature, historic nature of the, the church. Hey, Sarah. Yes. Jeb Stewart here. Um, not to uh, ask for anything that may be confidential, but is there any thought about how that sanctuary would be treated? Uh, no, I, I, I don't know specific details, Jeb. Um, I only know that you know there is some you know interest in being sensitive. Okay, got so it. I know at this point. So okay, yeah. Um, the next priority is the Harrisburg State Hospital. Um, you know, obviously an incredibly large property um, located on Cameron Street across from the Farm Show, and it's a hilltop campus of historic buildings and scenic landscape. Um, and it can really comparable to an Ivy League college campus. Uh, there's a tr the transfer of the ownership from the state to Dauphin County Redevelopment Authority is pending. And um, there is an historic Harrisburg's 2014 white paper, which urges preservation of the historic campus portion, sensitive development of the Elmerton Avenue tracks and preservation of open space around Asylum Run Watershed and the Capital Area Greenbelt. So at this point, we know that the state will continue to occupy until September 21. And um, then we may start to see movement, more movement on that property. So again, we're you know, keen to keep a, um, you know, a step, you know, be in step with what's happening so that we can uh, you know, be an advocate for this um, really amazing gem of a property here in Harrisburg as it progresses. Finally, our last priority for this year is the Prospect Hill Cemetery Gatehouse, uh, located at 25th and Market Streets. Um, it was severely damaged in a car collision, I think in the summer, um, and it's across from Harrisburg High School. So because of its uh, location at the end of Market Street, it really makes it a prime target for car accidents. And apparently this is not the first time it's been hit but it's a unique Victorian gatehouse acquired and moved from the Philadelphia Centennial 1876 exposition grounds. And it is a close cousin of the gatehouses at the entrance to the Philadelphia Zoo. So we are you know, hopeful to raise awareness of the damage, <clears throat> and perhaps help with um, you know, efforts to, to uh, you know, repair and restore. So that's and the top five priorities. And again, that will give us the committee, you know, a chance to really, you know, focus and hone in um, on these five properties. But that doesn't mean that we're forgetting about anything else that's uh, been a priority in the past. And so we've shifted those properties into what we're calling the watch list category. And this is the list encompassing all the priorities from the past year. So many of you will be familiar to some. We do have uh, one new one this year, and that's the Dixon University Center uh, right along um, Front Street. And it is currently owned by the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. And the state is uh, now considering sale of the property. Um, this is part of a strategic cost savings move on the part of um, the PA State System of Higher Education. This is an underutilized property and they're looking at downsizing. Um, it's a 6.5 acre campus that sits on the river. Um, the state system purchased it in 1991 and made substantial renovations to the historic buildings on the site that for decades housed the Harrisburg Academy, which was one of the nation's oldest non-public schools. And then during the depression and World War II, much of the property was sold to the US War Department to use as a training center for the military's air intelligence service. 
And the property also has been used as a temporary home for Harrisburg Area Community College while its Wildwood campus was being built. So obviously, excuse me, obviously the, the, the main building there that you see in the picture to the right um, is a newer building, but uh, from what I understand from David and others um, that it was really built uh, in an effort to be sensitive to some of the original architecture that is on the site. Um, so this is really an important uh, you know, piece of property uh, beautifully situated right on the Susquehanna River. Next on the watch list is uh, the Cameron, J. Donald Cameron Mansion. This went on to the watch, or watch list in 2020. Um, it is currently for sale and is still for sale. Um, and believe it is still for sale for 1.1 million uh, based on what we've seen on um, websites. And it is you know, really a very prominent, um, beautiful historic office building, you know, once a, a home uh, for the Camerons. And it's been beautifully maintained and contains you know, so much of its original woodwork, fireplaces and built-in structures. Uh, we held our priority preservation awards there in uh, 2019, I believe. Is that correct, David? Yes. Yes. Um, so it's really a stunning structure and decorated with antiques and collectibles that span its or origination through the early 1900s. Um, next on the list here is Riverside Firehouse. And as far as we know, the status that is shown from last year is still the same. It's for sale, uh, pending lot consolidations. Um, and both parcels are to be transferred to the Harrisburg Redevelopment Authority you know, before the, the lot consolidation. Um, I could not find any update. I don't know if Jeb or David, you have uh, any insight of any updates? I don't, Sarah. Okay. Um, next on the list is the Cumberland Valley Railroad Bridge, which is a, um, basically it's a, you know, it's an unused abandoned uh, bridge and it's the one that you can see from 83 as you um, cross over the river. Um, it's currently owned by Capital Area Transit and it would be, it's a beautiful bridge and it really has you know, great potential as a recreational link, a greenway link uh, between the East Shore and the West Shore. Next on the watch list is Milestone Inn, which is the former Baker Mansion. Um, it was when it went on the priority list in 2020, it was for sale. But when I checked today, uh, per Trulia, um, which is one of those online realty sites, it is currently off market. So I don't know um, its current, most current status and we'll definitely dig into that a little bit more. Next one is the Historic Peace Church, which is in Hampton Township at Trindle and St. John's Church Roads. Um, the owners here are the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission and it is currently for sale. And I believe it is also uh, rented out for events um, at times as well. Next is the Elks Theater, which is located in Middletown. And the current owner um, here is the Middletown Industrial and Commercial Development Authority. It's uh, you know, vacant and for sale. And it was originally built in 1911 and had 700 seats. And it was sold to the um, Middletown Industrial Com Development Authority in 2014. Um, it closed for major renovations in 2015 of April 2015, which were never completed. Um, the Friends of the Elks then decided to purchase the theater from um, MICDA and move forward with those renovations and get the theater back open, but MICDA would not sell and um, friends did not have sufficient rent funds to undertake the renovations. So the theater is uh, now for sale um, on the open market. <clears throat> The Coke building, uh, Coca-Cola Bottling Works building at 2225 South 17th Street 
is uh, still vacant and available. It was built in 1937 and in the central Allison Hill industrial area. Um, it's really an iconic structure evoking the famous Coca-Cola trademark embossed in concrete and its spandrel frieze. And it is um, posted as available and is really an excellent development opportunity on the South 17th Street corridor. There's a lot of housing happening in um, Harrisburg. So maybe it might be uh, a good place for um, affordable housing for the right developer. Uh, the Brisner Mansion, um, to our knowledge, the status hasn't changed. It's still unknown. Um, there was a threat uh, of demolition for surface parking uh, to adjacent the River Plaza apartment building. Um, I don't know if that's still, a, still the case, but it is a very historic and architecturally significant mansion along North Front Street and really continues to define that street's uh, legacy and character. Next is the Grace United Methodist Church, which has been a priority since 2019. Um, it was built between 1873 and 1878, and it's uh, said that it is said to have saved Harrisburg from losing its status as the capital of Pennsylvania, uh, when in 1897, when the original capital was destroyed by fire, um, the facilities uh, were opened uh, to the general legislature, um, you know, during the time that the new capital was being built. So it has a, you know, quite the, quite the history in that sense. And, you know, its location is right across from the Pennsylvania State Capitol. Um, and it is also located within a National Register Historic District. And David, are they, David or Jeb, are they still open and running? Yes. They are, okay. In fact, you know, with all the effort that went into this last year, it kind of um, got the congregation going again. We'll put it that way. I don't know, David. David, are you on? I'm, I'm on, yeah, I was mute for a while, but uh, I'm here. And yes, the, the congregation is growing and attracting new members. They, they got a few members from some of the other Methodist churches that closed, and I think they're capable of continuing, but uh, they, they aren't uh, totally masters of their future because the, the property is, is owned by the Susquehanna Conference, but I think so far so good, but, but right. it, it should stay on the watch list. Great. Yeah. That's great to hear. Um, Derry Street Church, another one of the United Methodist churches that uh, was caught up in the, the closure um, closures of the churches back in, nine, eight, in 2019. Um, it's a Gothic revile style church and it was completed in 1908 um, as the Derry Street United Brethren and Evangelical Church. Um, it served as a neighborhood and community center for the surrounding South Allison Hill area. And it really became an anchor for that community, providing a haven for people in need and supporting vital services such as weekly meals, clothing pantry, and counseling and support services. And the church is located within the Mount Pleasant National Register Historic District. The next one is Bishop Bridge. And this is um, a bridge over Yellow Breaches Creek. And the owners are Cumberland and York counties. And it's actually for sale. Um, so it's located on Bishop Road, just southwest of Bowmansdale on the Cumberland York County line. And the bridge has been determined for elig determined eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Place Places. It's an early Pratt through trust design and with has a you know, beautifully decorated railing. Um, the bridge was designed and built by the Wrought Iron Bridge Company of Ohio in 1898. The counties wish to sell the bridge because of its limited capacity for vehicular travel and the buyer would be responsible to disassemble and move the bridge. Anybody want to buy a bridge? Christ Lutheran Church. Now this is at 124 South 13th Street. Um, and the status of the HHA actually made a financial contribution uh, 
to the church in 2018. Um, David or Jeb, I don't know if there's any other updates on this. This is still an operating uh, church, so they're, to speak, correct? They're still operating and uh, struggling as many city churches are, but the, the, the great thing about that church, in addition to their, their religious ministry, they have an amazing social ministry serving the population of Allison Hill with medical uh, uh, programs and, and all kinds of programs for, for new immigrants and things like that. Uh, but I think, uh, uh, I, I don't think they're in any more danger than they've been, but, uh, but again, we, we, we want to keep them on the watch list. Yep, absolutely. Our next one is um, former St. Paul's Methodist Church, um, which is located in the Shypoke District. And it has been vacant for several years and is on the market for sale. Um, it's a Gothic revival uh, church built in 1898. And it really retains many of its original architectural features. Um, the ceiling is just absolutely beautiful in there uh, with that you know, open dome area above. Um, in 2006, the building was given to Harris Street United Methodist Church for possible use as a community center, but that didn't occur. And the property was sold to St. Mark's Coptic Orthodox Church in 2009. Um, that congregation ultimately decided to acquire one of the former, uh, acquire the former Memorial Lutheran Church at 17th and State Streets and put the Vine Street property up for sale. Um, this could property could really be renovated and returned to a religious facility or transformed into some other creative adaptive reuse project, um, you know, office space, uh, community space. So there's lots of options. It just takes, you know, takes the right, right buyer and vision. Uh, Zembo Shrine, this has been a priority since 2017 and, you know, it's located right in proximity um, of the Italian Lake District and uh, to William, the former William Penn High School as well. Um, it was completed in 1930 as the home for Harrisburg's Masonic organizations. And it, for over 85 years, it has served as a location for many important performances, sports competitions, rallies, and special events. Um, it it's just you know amazing Moorish revival architecture. And it was designed by noted Harrisburg architect, uh, Charles Howard Boyd. It's a 62, roughly 62,600 square foot building on 7.28 acres. Um, and I know that at some point it was under an agreement for sale and possibly moving forward again as some sort of event space, but I don't know whatever happened with that. We really haven't discussed it um, for about a year and I'm realizing so Jabber, uh, David, do you maybe have any update on that? There was a deal on the property, but because of COVID, it fell through. Ah, okay. That's a shame. For, as a, um, um, a performance uh, center, uh, venue center, um, it was a group from Oklahoma that had, done, right. uh, had converted other Masonic temples around the country. That was their yep. specialty. They looked at this. I think they may have had it under agreement with contingencies. I'm not sure about that, but the whole thing because of COVID went by the wayside. Yeah. Well, maybe with when we get out of this pandemic and things start to circle back, right. you know, Yeah. hopefully it'll come back to fruition. All right. The next one is um, the Paxton Firehouse. And just as a side note, when I first moved to Harrisburg, <laughs> <clears throat> well, we've only lived here for about three and a half years now, and we would come into Harrisburg over the bridge on 83 until we learned some of the other back ways to get into the city, um, my spouse and I, and um, I would always notice this building and was just really taken with this building. Um, just, I just love its architecture and just think it would be a great, you know, a great architect's office and such. So anyway, it was designed by uh, William Lynch Murray and it was built in 1937 to replace um, a predecessor firehouse at the same, of the same name and location that was heavily damaged in the 1936 flood. It's a beautiful Art Deco style um, and it's uh, within the city's municipal historic district. 
Um, it just falls just outside of the National Register District. It was closed in 2014 um, after mutual agreement between the city officials and the firemen's union. And um, the, the Paxton Fire Company has initiated plans uh, to potentially sell the property. Um, you know, it's really a prominent location in the city's Southern Gateway, you know, right on Paxton Street there. So it would be wonderful to see, you know, something happen in terms of adaptive reuse. And again, going back to what I said earlier, I, I'm, I am very hopeful that um, the pandemic will actually provide Harrisburg with some, you know, uh, revitalization that, uh, you know, can further make the city, you know, the wonderful place that it is. Next one is the Beetleman House. Um, right now, to our knowledge there, the status is the same. It's, it's just undergoing severe deterioration, no preservation plan. Um, it's uh, located on Market Street and it's really served as a gateway to Allison Hill. It was built in 1906. Um, it is located in the Mount Pleasant Historic District and due to its location also within a National Register Historic District, the property is eligible for federal rehabilitation tax credits. Um, the city added the property to its demolition list in 2017, further raising concerns about its future. So this is probably one of the hot items uh, on the uh, watch list. It might, might circle back to or come up as a uh, priority in one of the top five next year. Um, Walnut Street Bridge. Um, this is such a cool bridge. Uh, I park on City Island sometimes to walk in and I walk across it to work. Um, and it's uh, just a beautiful bridge. Um, it was a truss bridge built by the Phoenix Bridge Company in 1890. It is the oldest bridge on the 400 mile Susquehanna River. And I just learned that um, you know, putting this presentation together, uh, I was really, that. That's I just find that's to be very cool because the Susquehanna River is, you know, it's a very long river going down to the Chesapeake Bay. Um, since the flooding in 1996 destroyed sections of the Western span, it no longer connects to the West shore. Um, it's one of the longest pedestrian bridges in the world at 2,801 feet um, total span. And the conversion to the pedestrian use gave the bridge a new purpose and is used by over a million visitors, tourists and residents annually. Um, the bridge was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1972 and is also recognized as a historic civil engineering landmark. Um, in 2012, Lighten Up Harrisburg relit the Walnut Street Bridge and has continued to raise funds to explore LED lighting opportunities. Um, other efforts supported by us, HHA, seek to replace the missing Western spans so that the East Shore and West Shore could be reconnected um, in another another spot. So that finishes out the watch list items. And our next category is change of status. So here we go into reporting updates on preservation priorities of the past years. And for the most part, it is generally good news. So first we have um, Gerber's department store or former Gerber's department store. Um, it's been a priority since 2020. Uh, really cool building, really cool front with those, you know, large, you know, large window openings and the, you know, Gerber draperies signage uh, across the front. Um, but it is pending sale uh, to Third Street Realty Company. And that just happened, I think, recently, probably in the second or third quarter of 2020. Uh, but it's... Um, Third Street Realty is owned by a gentleman who lives in the area and he really wants to restore this building and restore it as a multi-use residential and retail building. And for one article, I think I read it in the Berg, he actually would like to live on the top floor. So he's you know, invested in this if this all goes through. Um, Sheepford Road Bridge, uh, currently it is under joint ownership of Cumberland and York counties. And um, a transfer of ownership is being explored. Uh, HHA actually wrote a letter in support of efforts to preserve and restore this historic bridge back in July of 2020. Um, 
And this was uh, written in support of the Friends of Sheepford Road Bridge and their ongoing advo advocacy efforts to uh, keep this bridge in operation. You know, whether just as a, a landmark, you know, like a place to visit. Um, and they are currently, as of October of this year, the um, county, Cumberland County commissioners um, had made a motion to allow the Friends of Sheepford Road Bridge to explore three potential options and secure the funding necessary uh, for disposition of the bridge. And here I'm actually reading from um, an email that we had received back in October. And the options include transfer of ownership to a new owner to determine future use, transfer ownership, disassemble and store at new owner's designated location for future use, um, or transfer ownership and transfer bridge to Yellow Reaches Park. Um, so they think they do have a time limit on this, but correct me if I'm wrong, David, I think it's like a year. Do you remember? Well, maybe we lost David. But they do have a, um, a certain amount of time to explore these options and come back to the county. So we're keeping in contact with the uh, Friends of Sheepford Bridge Road and they you know, send, tend to send us updates as things happen. The next one is uh, former Brotherhood Relief and Compensation Fund building. Um, there is a new owner and this owner has actually begun first phases of a comprehensive restoration plan for the site. Um, I believe one article I read, I don't know if this is still happening, was but the potential for turning it into a grocery store. Um, Jeb, have, is, is that what you know of it at this point? Okay. Our next... Um, property is the Harrisburg History Project. Um, this is a project that HHA has um, assisted with and it, con it consists of 113 outdoor displays describing and illustrating historic buildings, neighborhoods and landmarks of local state and national importance. Um, the intent of the project was to provide tourists and local residents with information about the sites and really create a visually interactive experience to help compare then and now um, about Harrisburg. The system was installed a number of years ago and some of the exhibits had been damaged, removed or deteriorated due to wear and tear. Uh, funds are needed to replace um, some of these, but based on a um, grant received um, by HHA and Midtown Action Council. Uh, the gaming grant was received for $13,652 to upgrade the system and 16 new pedestal, pedestals have been installed and 10 exhibit panels uh, um, were installed um, or have been delivered for installation and additional gaming funds were awarded in 2020. So there will be continued um, focus on this history project. The next one is First United Methodist Church at 260 Boa Street. Um, the owner of this is now Dilks Properties of Harrisburg. And there are actually permit drawings underway for a multifamily conversion. Um, and I know all the inside scoop on this because Chris Dawson Architect, the firm that I am with is working with Derek on the renovation of this um, of this church. And Derek is, is working to keep a lot of the, um, you know, aspects of the building intact. And he's working with uh, Gina Dowdy, who is an historic tax credit specialist, um, you know, towards applications for monies related to you know, historic tax credit. So he's, he's very keen to keep this um, as it is to as the extent he can with what he wants to do with the conversion. The next one on the site 
I'm sorry, the next on the uh, change of status is the Lemoyne Middle School. Um, this is another building that was purchased by uh, Dilks Properties of Harrisburg and another partner, and they now have it under Schoolhouse Flats LLC. And the project is actually under construction um, to a multifamily conversion. Um, so this original school was built in 1925 and it's a landmark um, along Market Street in Lemoyne and it closed in 2013 and was vacant until uh, Derek um, purchased it. I believe it actually was purchased by another entity in 2018 or so and then Derek purchased it from that entity in 2019. Um, the building's facade has an, is Italianate and Romanesque features with an abundant amount of corbelled pattern brickwork um, in its design. And it's just really a, a very stunning building, the original. Next is, uh, next, um, is former Bishop McDevitt High School. And it is, has been leased to an entity known as the Bridge uh, for redevelopment as an eco-village. And they are actively pursuing, um, you know, avenues to get this eco village going. And I believe that they are working with Murray Associates. Uh, I may be incorrect on that, but I know they're working with an architect. I've seen renderings. Um, so things are in motion there. I think it is Murray. David, did you say something? I said, yes. Uh, it, I believe it is Murray Architect. I it is Murray, okay. I, I don't know that it's an, an official arrangement yet, but I think that they have been involved in some fashion uh, up to this point. Yeah, I think that was my understanding too. I remember seeing some renderings um, at some point. Um, next on the list here is the Jackson. The, did someone say something? Uh, next on the list is the Jackson Rooming House, um, which has been a priority since 2000. And the current owner is Matt Long. And he was actually undertaking renovations um, you know, to the building, actually trying to stabilize it so he could do the, the renovations. And unfortunately, um, I believe it was July 2nd, either the first or the second of this year, it collapsed. But there is a plan in motion to rebuild it in its original form. And David, I think you you maybe have talked to Matt, so you have a little bit more um, insight yes. on that. Yeah, he, he hasn't given up. In fact, there, there have been a lot of work there. Just today I drove by uh, prepping the site. Uh, they need to assemble financing. Uh, and uh, really, the plan all along was to rebuild a good bit of it because so much of it was, was uh, in such bad shape. So it just means that they now have more of it to rebuild. So uh, the, the notion that, that this was a, a lost cause, I think, um, is not the case. Matt is, is determined to rebuild. Sprocket Mural Works that, uh, that uh, sponsored the big mural that everybody loves uh, has already committed to doing a replacement mural when the building gets rebuilt. Uh, and uh, I think we want to do everything we can to encourage the reconstruction of, of this landmark. Great. I'm really glad to hear that they, uh, they're they going to recreate the, um, the mural. That was actually one of my questions. That, that's probably more popular than the building itself uh, <laughs> since it went up. And the other thing is, now that they're kind of starting from scratch in terms of the construction, they can make the interior much more uh, suitable for 20th, 21st century uh, occupancy. It had been a private residence and then it was cut up into being a, a rooming house. So they would have had to do a lot of changes to the interior to make it uh, functional for the 21st century. Now by starting from scratch and they wanna replicate the roof line and the tower and all the features that are, that are familiar, I think that in some ways it'll be easier. Yeah. Yeah, renovating a, an existing building is is often more difficult than building new construction. So, 
worth every you know worth every step and penny, but it, it's uh, it's a different animal. Mm -hmm. um, the next change in status, which I realized that probably should actually be in the wins category, um, is the historic Ridge Avenue Methodist Church parsonage, uh, which is owned now by Vice Capital LLC. Um, you know, some of the two of the members, which are the McCoy brothers, the football players. Um, and it, its restoration and conversion to residential multi-unit use has been completed. So um, we'll probably stick this in the win category uh, when we transfer everything to the website. Sarah, I think that's a great idea. And we can, we can get a a more up-to-date photograph. I mean, the, the photo on the right is fairly up-to-date, but since they finished the building, they, they've, they've painted the wood trim and they've taken down the project sign and a few other things. So yeah. It really, I agree with you. Putting it on the wind list is a great idea. Great. Might be um, interesting to see. I, I mean, I it would, probably would have been better. I don't know if people are living in there now, but it would have been neat to be able to go in and see some of the units, how they redid it on the inside. Well, we actually were able to do that a, a month oh. ago. We, we had a, a, a sidewalk seminar with, with Matt Long. Uh, I think it was in December. I oh, think. that's right. I, I forgot about that. That's absolutely right. Looks great on the inside. Good. Apartment. Great. I'll, I'd like to see pictures next time I see you. Uh, next on our list is Broad Street Market. Um, it's been a priority since 1996, and it's the oldest continuously operating farmer's market um, and really an anchor for the Midtown Market District. Um, you know, it's a vibrant uh, space. You know, it has been hit with the pandemic like so many, but I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's still a place that people are going to and, and uh, it's, you know, will stay the course. Um, but it has undergone steady managerial and facility improvement since the formation of the nonprofit Broad Street Market Alliance. So, and we, you know, will continue to keep an eye on it, even though it's in the change of status. But, um, you know, great operational improvements continue to occur. And I'm sure, you know, as we move forward, that the aging infrastructure uh, you know, will be addressed. So I think it's a, uh, it's, um, it's a very important space for the citizens of Harrisburg, this market. And the historic Harrisburg Resource Center, um, which you know is, is our, our home, of course, it's been a priority since 1993. And we as an organization are slowly and steadily working on uh, its rehabilitation and restoration. Um, we've had some great work done on the exterior and exterior restoration is nearly complete. And then subsequent work will address the interior refurbishment. So we are moving forward um, slowly but surely. Now just a, a few preservation um, losses. Thankfully there aren't too many. Um, one was presented last year actually, uh, but you know, as much as we try to preserve our history, sometimes portion of the history is physically lost. And these losses and stories, we will, we will archive them on our website. Uh, but the first one was um, the historic Bell Tavern. This was, was a priority that we were hoping that it was maybe going to uh, get some movement towards rehabilitation and restoration. I think I remember that when I first joined Historic Harrisburg in 2018. And unfortunately it was uh, totally demolished. And then the, I don't know if I will pronounce this name correctly, the Giusti Mansion, um, but it was demolished and the property put up for sale. And actually is the property, has the property been sold? Does anyone know? Deb can probably speak to that. I, I believe it has been sold, and I think there are now uh, discussions underway about to be built there. Now it's, now it's a question of uh, appropriate redevelopment of, of, of a front street parcel of land. Okay. 
Uh, it, uh, David, it's under agreement. Uh, hasn't been sold yet. There is a proposal for the reuse of the property for new construction for uh, medical offices, but I'm not sure where that's going at this point. Okay. All right, so now we move on to, to our wins and on a high note. So again, uh, these wins will be archived and accessible on the website. That's they there. We don't have these categories on a website created yet, um, but that is one of the you know goals for 2021 as we move into this new format. Um, so we'll be working with uh, those other members of the Historic Harrisburg Association that work with the website and develop the website and, and update it and such. So the former. Um, Santana's restaurant Fox Hotel is now known as the Fox on Washington. Uh, it was it is owned by Harris Town Enterprises, um, and it is a eight unit residential apartment complex now. And it was awarded a uh, preservation award this past year. So obviously we did not have our normal ceremony due to COVID, but David and I did meet. Uh, Brad Jones on site and took a picture uh, with their, you know, with the, with the building. So that's a great win. Another building I kept noticing on my drives down, you know, as Paxton Street turns into um, Second Street. Uh, Locust Street houses, um, these have been preserved and the owner is Thomas Nardi. Uh, General Henry and Elizabeth Gross Mansion. Um, current owners are Christopher and Erica Bryce, and they substantially restored um, this residence. I'm assuming it's their residence now, David. Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 Also, Sarah, we'll get, we'll get you a, a, a more up-to-date photo which shows the uh, rooftop balustrade which they restored recently. Uh, they did a great job with that, not only saving the building from from what was almost going to be certain demolition, but they lived there with their family, and uh, they've done a great job preserving uh, this wonderful Front Street mansion. Great. It would be great to, if, you know, if we could get some, you know, as we archive these, get photos of before and after, or you know, older photos, and, you know, maybe, I know, Jeb, you have done so much research, but we'll... We'll figure out how to really, you know, put some good content, you know, over the next year. Right. Um, next is the Mary Sachs Mansion and Hull Mansion, and this um, was fully restored in 2015 as the Manor on Front Front Bed and Breakfast. Um, I was going to check to see are they still operational? Yeah. Are they? Oh, good. Okay. I know yep. just people have been hit with COVID in different ways. Um, former Moose Lodge and Union Lofts. Um, owners here are WCI partners, and that was an adaptive reuse completed um, for co working space for freelancers, remote workers, and entrepreneurs. The interesting thing with uh, the, uh, uh, the Moose Lodge. The apartments are, are leased out, and, and that upper the upper floors of the building are, are you know doing very well. But uh, the whole notion of having a co-working space uh, that's not in your own home is, is kind of a funny, different situation. So I haven't seen any activity since the pandemic started in terms of people having their little cubicles on the first floor. But I don't think that. Is, is a deal killer in, in terms of keeping this building uh, self-supporting. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, whether, whether the, the startup business that was that really drove it to begin with, whether, whether that uh, picks back in after uh, the pandemic is over, uh, uh, who knows? But yeah, it'll be interesting. There's close to 20 apartments upstairs, so it, it, that part of it is, is doing well. Great. So David, this is Shane. I just wanted to share that I know from a industry perspective on that, they actually think there's going to be an increase because a lot of companies are pulling back on their office space. 
So it will be interesting to see. I think one of the challenges they've always had there is the lack of parking. So I had spoken to one of the coworker partners maybe four or five months ago, and they were looking at <clears throat> another location with parking, but I wasn't clear on whether they were going to operate both or move into one that had parking. But I do think it's going to take some time for that to recover. Thanks, Jane. Yeah, I'm reading some of the same kind of industry just from the ar architectural side as well um, that Shane was just talking about. So I think it's really going to be interesting to, to see how the next few years shake out in terms of, you know, work, live um, type balance and how we start to use spaces differently. Uh, I really have this twice. So Sarah. Yeah, Jeff. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to sign off. I've, I've got something I got to deal with here. Uh, you've done an excellent job with this presentation. So Thank you, sir. I appreciate uh, it. Very well done, but I'm going to, I'm going to sign off. Okay. Thanks for your input. Thank you very much, Sarah. Sure. See you, Jim. See you guys. All right. So Camp Curtain Firehouse, I'm sorry, Camp Curtain uh, Fire Station. Um, this was restored and repurposed as a medical marijuana Ooh, marijuana is misspelled um, dispensary. <laughs> so, somebody was doing this was smoking, apparently. <laughs> um, so anyway, and I believe that is the last slide, and it is. So for those of you who are here, thank you very much uh, for being here, for your support. And, you know, we are always interested in hearing uh, from all of you about, you know, buildings that you think deserve attention um, and such. So, you know, please, you know, reach out, contact us, you know, all our contact info is below. Um, and if anyone has questions or comments, you know, of course, we'll, you know, we're here, we'll stay on and, and take any questions and discuss any comments. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Uh, I was glad to have some of you speak up during Sarah's presentation, but others Feel free to speak up now if you have a question or a comment. Or get back to us at, at your convenience. Uh, we want to tell you about uh, uh, upcoming programs. Uh, Dorothy, Dr. King, are, are you going to, to give, give that report of the upcoming programs? Are you there? And if so, you'll need to unmute yourself. I am. Go ahead. But I don't, I don't think I'm being seen. I can talk, but I don't see myself. Neither am I. Okay. Well, then this is Dorothy King. You can't see me, but I will talk to you. And I am so happy that you have joined us for this presentation. I think Sarah did an awesome job. So thank you, Sarah and your committee. I want to let you know that we have some wonderful upcoming programs that we are so happy to share with you. We do a series that we call the Fourth Monday series. And we, we create programs like this that give you information on um, important aspects of Harrisburg's um, architecture and um, Harrisburg's culture and Harrisburg's history. So two that I want to share with you are um, one is about one is on February 22nd and it's about the Underground Railroad here in Harrisburg and we're going to have three uh, wonderful presenters we're going to address that uh, and thank you Sarah's already put this up for me or David's put this up somebody I did, put this up. I did. Put this up. thank you Shane so now you can you have a visual while I'm talking so the first program is called the uh, is about the Underground Railroad in Harrisburg, and we've got three wonderful presenters. Caleb Jackson will be talking about um, he'll give he'll give us an overview of what the Underground Railroad looked like in Harrisburg. Really, what was it? And then we will have um, Norman Kelker talking about the uh, the white abolitionist who participated in the Underground Railroad here in Harrisburg. And he'll be talking about some of his ancestors who were part of the Underground Railroad. And then finally, Barbara Barksdale, who is the director of Historic Midland Cemetery in Steelton, will be talking about the African American abolitionists who participated in the Underground Railroad in Harrisburg and Steelton.
So that's our program for February. Our program for March, which is March 22nd, is about strong women here in Harrisburg. And we're partnering with Virginia Roth, who's done her family genealogy and has uh, identified many very strong women um, uh, in her uh, on her family tree who lived in Harrisburg and have and she has very interesting stories to share about them. So those are our first two programs, and I'm going to turn it over to David now. Uh, our our next program, or our our program after that in April, is a very special program, and David's going to tell you about that. Okay, thank you, and thank you and the Commission Committee for putting together this great series of, of programs. It's really a wonderful part of what we do. The April program is not going to be a fourth Monday. It's going to be on uh, Saturday, April 24th, Saturday morning. We'll have more details coming out, but the nationally re recognized window expert, John Lintner, who has given us programs before, is actually going to be up on a ladder restoring the window on the back of our building that Saturday morning and talking about window preservation and so forth. And that will kick off a major window restoration project that we're launching here at our building. So it will be very interesting. This is sponsored by the Auchincloss Family Fund. They uh, sponsor our uh, how-to programs uh, in April of each year. And so this, this will be great. And I uh, uh, encourage everybody to, uh, to, to come out. Uh, we'll all be standing uh, out on the sidewalk and on Susquehanna Street, uh, ideally uh, for an outdoor program on that uh, Saturday morning in April. And uh, with that, I, I want to thank again Sarah Sweeney and, and the Preservation Committee for a fantastic job putting this Together, this is going to go on the website. It's going to go into our spring edition of Harrisburg Heritage Magazine, which is received by all of our members. Uh, it will be promoted uh, to the news media, as I mentioned at the start of the program. Uh, it, last year, the Patriot and the Bergs picked up this story uh, hook, line, and sinker and ran with it, and we hope they'll do it again. Uh, and uh, so you'll be hearing more of it. So again, uh, thank you all. And I think with that, um, we're ready to sign off. Shane Gallagher, who is co-chair of our communications committee, we thank you for, for setting all this up for us and the website, all the other things that you do in that regard for our virtual and electronic communicating uh, it's really great. And all of you who, who signed in and, and participated tonight, thank you very much. And we hope to see you again soon.